Good morning, class. Welcome to the Human K channel. Today, we delve into the life and contributions of a remarkable figure in the field of education, Benjamin Samuel Bloom. Born in 1913 in Lansford, Pennsylvania, Benjamin Bloom was a renowned educator who left an indelible mark on the field. He possessed an insatiable thirst for knowledge and dedicated his life to the pursuit of understanding how we learn. Bloom earned his bachelor's and master's degrees from Pennsylvania State University and later pursued his doctorate at the University of Chicago. His academic journey provided him with a solid foundation to embark on his groundbreaking work. One of Bloom's most notable achievements was the development of Bloom's Taxonomy, a comprehensive framework that classified educational objectives. This taxonomy continues to be widely used in classrooms around the world. Bloom and his team identified three domains of educational activities or learning, the cognitive domain, the psychomotor domain, and the affective domain. Now, we'll be delving into the cognitive domain of learning. It's a fundamental aspect of education that helps us understand how students acquire and apply knowledge. Let's begin. According to Bloom's taxonomy, the cognitive domain places an emphasis on the mental and intellectual processes involved in learning. It provides a hierarchical structure for learning objectives and is widely used in educational settings. The original version of Bloom's taxonomy, introduced by Benjamin Bloom in 1956, focuses on the acquisition and application of knowledge. It consists of six levels, each building on the previous one. The foundation of the cognitive domain is knowledge. This level involves recalling information and facts. For instance, we could ask a question like, name three common types of fruits. This level sets the stage for higher levels of learning. Above knowledge is comprehension. Here, students make sense of information and demonstrate their understanding. An example question could be, summarize the defining characteristics of apple, grapes, and orange. Next, we have applications. At this level, students take their knowledge and apply it to new but similar situations. An example question could be, does eating fruits help improve longevity? In analysis, students break down knowledge into its components and explore relationships. They compare and contrast different aspects. For instance, compare and contrast the different ways of serving fruits and compare their health benefits. Synthesis involves using information to create something new. Students may have to modify or adapt existing knowledge to produce an original result. For example, convert an unhealthy recipe for fruits into a healthy recipe by replacing certain ingredients. Argue for the health benefits of using the ingredients you chose as opposed to the original ones. The highest level of cognitive learning is evaluation. Here, students critically examine the available information to make judgments. An example question might be, which kinds of fruits are best for making a healthy meal, and why? Now that we understand the levels of the cognitive domain, it's important to note that knowledge itself can be classified into four types. Factual knowledge, conceptual knowledge, procedural knowledge, and metacognitive knowledge. Factual knowledge refers to terminology and specific details. Conceptual knowledge involves understanding categories, principles, theories, and structures. Procedural knowledge encompasses skills, algorithms, techniques, and methods. Lastly, metacognitive knowledge relates to thinking, cognitive tasks, and self-knowledge. Remember, these types of knowledge are not necessarily ordered by their concreteness or abstractness. It's essential to recognize their dynamic nature and understand that different types of knowledge can be recalled at different stages of learning. Now, we will be delving into the effective domain of learning. This domain focuses on the emotional aspects of our learning experience, including our feelings, values, motivations, and attitudes. Let's explore the different levels together. The effective model was introduced in 1964 as an extension of Bloom's original work on learning domains. It complements the cognitive model and provides insights into how we handle emotions in the learning process. Starting from the bottom, we have the level of receiving. At this stage, individuals demonstrate basic awareness and receptivity. An example of this could be when you listen and remember the names of your classmates on the first day of school. Moving up, we reach the level of responding. Here, active participation and reactions to stimuli are key. An example of this would be actively participating in a class discussion, sharing your thoughts, and engaging with others. Next, we have the level of valuing. 
This level involves assigning value and importance to objects or information. It ranges from basic acceptance to complex commitment and is influenced by our prior knowledge and experiences. For instance, valuing diversity and being sensitive to other people's backgrounds and beliefs. Moving further up, we reach the level of organizing. At this stage, individuals sort their values into priorities and create a unique value system. They compare and relate their previously identified values. An example of this would be accepting professional ethical standards and integrating them into one's personal and professional lives. At the highest level, we have characterizing. This is where abstract knowledge is built upon the knowledge acquired at the previous levels. A value system is now fully integrated and controls an individual's behavior. An example would be displaying a professional commitment to ethical standards in the workplace by consistently aligning actions with one's values. Understanding the effective domain helps us recognize the importance of emotions, values, and attitudes in our learning journey. It influences how we engage with the material and shapes our overall learning experience. Now, we venture into the fascinating realm of the psychomotor domain, the third and final domain of Bloom's taxonomy. This domain encompasses physical movement, coordination, and the development of motor skills. Let's explore the levels together. The psychomotor model focuses on acquiring mastery in specific physical skills marked by speed, precision, and distance. These skills range from simple tasks like washing a car to complex tasks like operating intricate technological equipment. The psychomotor model, like the cognitive domain, has undergone modifications over time. In 1970, Robert Armstrong and colleagues introduced a five-level model, starting with imitation and progressing to naturalization. However, in 1972, Anita Harrow proposed a revised version with six levels, emphasizing different aspects of skilled behavior. Let's delve into Harrow's revised model, which focuses on developing physical fitness, dexterity, agility, and body control. At the initial level, we have perception. This level involves basic awareness and estimation. An example could be estimating where a ball will land after it's thrown and positioning yourself to catch it. Moving up, we reach the level of set. Here, we develop the readiness to act, encompassing the mental, physical, and emotional mindsets that influence our actions. An example would be desiring to learn how to throw a perfect strike while recognizing our current inability to do so. Next, we have guided responses. This stage marks the beginning of mastering a physical skill. It involves trial and error and learning by observing and imitating. An example would be throwing a ball after closely observing a coach's movements. Moving further up, we reach the level of mechanism. At this stage, learned responses are converted into habitual reactions, allowing us to perform with confidence and proficiency. An example would be successfully throwing a ball to the catcher. The level of complex overt response comes next. Here, we skillfully perform complex movements automatically, without hesitation. An example would be throwing a perfect strike to the catcher's glove. As we progress, we encounter adaptation. At this stage, our skills are so developed that we can modify them according to specific requirements. An example would be throwing a perfect strike to the catcher even when a batter is standing at the plate. The pinnacle of the psychomotor domain is origination. This level entails creating new movements based on already developed skill sets and adapting to various situations or problems. An example would be taking the skill set needed to throw a perfect fastball and learning how to throw a curveball. Understanding the psychomotor domain provides us with insights into the acquisition of physical skills and the progression from basic awareness to the ability to create and adapt movements. Embrace this domain, and you'll unleash your potential in various areas of expertise.